वेलकम एवरीवन टू अनदर शॉर्ट वीडियो ऑन आज द एक्सपर्ट्स वेरी कवर द मोस्ट ट्रेंडिंग एंड द मोस्ट सर्च क्वेरीज ऑनलाइन पर्टेनिंग टू द साइबर सिक्योरिटी इंडस्ट्री आवर यूट्यूब चैनल इट इज द दी मोस्ट कंप्लायंस वीडियो होस्टिंग चैनल ऑन द नेट टुडे वी विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग विद द सीरीज दैट वी हैव स्टार्टेड ऑन पीसीआई डीएसएस 4.0 the latest version of the so today we'll be covering requirement 5 and in case you've not already seen it we have already done requirements number 1 2 3 and 4 so let's jump directly into it and see what this new requirement has to be and before we go we upload requirement number 6 then 7 then 8 and we upload like one video a week at least plus our webinar videos and so many things uh, do subscribe and click on the bell icon so as you go ahead under pci dss 3.2.1 requirement 5 was earlier named as protect all systems against malware and regularly update antivirus softwares or programs now this has been updated as protect all systems and networks from malicious softwares of course there is some sort of uh, difference between malicious software and an antivirus so antivirus was earlier like a self propagating program like a not a good program <laughs> it is supposed to be harming your system like stealing your data or slowing down your systems and stuff malware it has become so much more there is adware there is ransomware the title which has been updated in the latest version to reflect and emphasize the focus on protecting all systems and networks from malicious softwares so earlier the requirement 5.1 of pci dss 3.2.1 included the need to deploy antivirus software on all systems which are commonly affected by malicious software you know particularly personal computers and servers now the key word over here is commonly affected i i'll tell you why give me some time the requirement 5.1.1 of pci dss 3.2.1 well this mentions about the need to ensure that antivirus programs are capable of detecting removing and protecting against all known types of malicious software so addressing the same requirement in the latest version 5.2.1 the same thing it talks about deploying deploying an anti malware solution on all system components except for those system components identified in periodic evaluations as per requirement 5.2.3 which concludes that the system components are not at risk from malware now this requirement 5.2.1 in essence says that as per requirement 5.2.3 some systems are not required to be having anti malware solution then it's okay not to have it because they are not considered at risk from malware 5.1.2 it talks about performing periodic evaluations that are not uh, commonly uh, on systems that are not commonly you know affected by viruses whether or not they require the antivirus software but in the latest version pci dss 4.0 a new requirement has been um, provided that is the roles and responsibilities are to be defined and assigned to personnel for performance of activities as per requirement number 5 now this this requirement is common across this control is common across all the requirements from 1 to 12 that is having the right r and r roles and responsibilities for the personnel and it should be documented and understood by the person but this particular requirement is mandatory immediately you cannot say that we'll do it when it is actually mandated march 31st 2025 like most of the other controls these controls are effectively implemented immediately as you go before you go ahead i'm sure that many of you would be thinking that okay um this sounds like the earlier requirement 5 of pci dss 3.2.1 what is the change <laughs> not much to be honest with you because uh, the requirement 5 i think was extremely well written even at that time there were some missing components which is now covered in this but more, by and large if i can say this requirement 5 under pci dss 3.2.1 and pci dss 4 is almost the same okay so the same aspect of requirement 5.1.2 or pci dss 3.2.1 is covered under the requirement 5.2.3 that, that i said earlier that they need to conduct periodic evaluation on system components that are not considered at risk for malware and further document the list of all those system components so you really need to have some sort of a clarification as to why uh, those particular system components are called as not at risk from malware so in addition to this the requirement also talks about identifying and evaluating the evolving malware threats for those system components and confirm whether or not these systems actually require anti malware 
But if I might tell you, like I've been this for almost 30 years now in the cyber security, uh, information security back then. Don't take the chance. See, nowadays anti-malware solutions are almost dirt cheap, dirt cheap. You might say, oh, my some of my systems don't need an antivirus. So come on, you can't afford like $10. Like most anti-malware solutions are cheaper than $10. Why are you taking the risk? So you might say that, okay, my systems are not that critical. So then my answer would be, why are you doing PCI? So those things are there. So I would suggest you not to use this control, but I actually have it rolled out across all your systems. So there is also a new requirement 5.2.3.1, which talks about the frequency of the periodic evaluations of system components not at risk from malware should be done via a targeted risk analysis. So how, how often to evaluate, it should be based on a targeted risk analysis. Now, again, this is the best practice until 31st March 2025. Now, in the earlier version of PCI DSS version 3.2.1, the requirement 5.2 talks about ensuring that all antivirus uh, mechanisms are maintained, kept at updated, and organizations perform periodic scans and further generate logs that are retained as per PCI DSS requirement 10.7. As per the latest updated version of PCI DSS 4.0v, and the requirement addressing the earlier versions of uh, the earlier versions of PCI DSS 3.2.1 requirement 5.2 is now split into three components, which I'll shortly cover now. This is the normal drill that you've seen even the earlier version standard of 3.2.1 that is uh, 5.3.1 talks about e keeping the anti malware current via automatic updates. PCI DSS requirement 5.3.2 talks about performing periodic scans and active or real-time scans. Now, in addition to this, the new requirement 5.3.2.1 uh, also talks about defining the frequency of scans in the entity's targeted risk analysis that should be performed according to all elements specified in requirement 12.3.1. Now, this is a new requirement and is a best practice until 31st March 2025. Moving on, PCI DSS 4.0 introduced a new requirement, which is requirement 5.3.3. And this speaks about performing automatic scans of removable electronic media. So the USB, when the media is inserted, connected and logically mounted, it should be auto-scanned. Now, you might say that this requirement is already there in the earlier PCI DSS 3.1. But that was not talking about an automated scan. Here it is now become automated. We're now talking about requirement 5.3.4 or PCI DSS 4. It talks about enabling audit logs for anti malware solutions and retaining them in the accordance with the requirements of requirement 10.5.1. Now talking about requirement 5.3.5 or PCI DSS 4, it says that the anti malware mechanisms cannot be disabled or altered by users unless specifically documented and authorized by the management on a case-by-case -case basis for a limited period. This is very important. So earlier, the version of uh, PCI DSS 321, requirement 5.4 talked about ensuring that all security policies and operational procedures for protecting systems against malware are documented in use and affected and, and known to all affected parties. That was uh, like, this was the last control of every requirement and it was the, on all the 12 requirements. So this has been addressed now in PCI DSS 4.0 requirement 5.1.1. And this talks about having an in-place security policy and operational procedures that are identified in requirement 5 that should be documented, kept up to date, in use, and known to all affected parties. Now, furthermore, the PCI DSS 4.0 version introduced a new requirement, 5.4.1, that talks about establishing processes and automated mechanisms to detect and protect personnel against phishing attacks. Now, remember earlier I told you that there is one point which is really required and it's been covered in the best practice until 31st March 2025. But I would suggest you to roll it out immediately and not wait for 31st March 2025. It's a very, very critical and important requirement. So do not postpone it for next year or 2025. So this is a summary of the requirements as you've seen. So with this, we end our informative session on PCI DSS requirement five, summary of changes from version three to one to four dot zero. I really hope that this video has been of use to you and helps clear all your doubts. In case you don't have, uh, you still have doubts, do drop in a mail at ask us at vistainfosec.com and we'll be more than happy to, and we'll be more than happy to assist you. Now we'll be covering in the next session, requirement number six for PCI DSS, which is the summary of changes from 3.2.1 to 4.0. So stay tuned for the upcoming webinar. We ha have one every month. So thank you again for your presence and for viewing our video. Do leave a like, leave a comment, and do let us know what you think about this.
Thank you again and have a wonderful day ahead. Take care. Bye-bye.